Today I'm going to show you the best way to increase contrast very naturally. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and any of the photos that you see in this tutorial, if you want to download them, check the links in the description. So first of all, let us understand what the heck is contrast. Contrast is simply difference. If you look at the literal meaning of contrast, it just means a lot of difference, right? It can be the difference between the texture, the pattern or whatever there is. We can say there is a lot of contrast between the t-shirt that you're wearing and the trousers that you're wearing, right? So contrast can be anything between big and small, anything where there's a lot of difference involved, that is contrast. In terms of image, contrast means the difference between highlights and shadows. In other words, difference between brights and darks. Often we are in the misconception that increasing the contrast just means making the brights brighter and making the darks darker. It's not just that. Even if the brights are bright enough and we make the darks darker, we are still increasing the contrast. Why? Because we are increasing the difference between brights and the darks anyway. Similarly, if the darks are dark enough or if you want to keep it the way it is and this is the brights, you're just making the brights brighter. You're still increasing the contrast because the difference is increased. So always remember, what is contrast? It's just difference. In case of an image, it is the difference between brights and the darks. Or in other words, the difference between highlights and shadows. So the best way to increase contrast is, ready for this? Curves, as you guessed it. But it's not just that. There's a lot more attached to it. We're going to cover that in this tutorial. For example, have a look at this image. So let's go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. So you want to keep the darks the way they are. Let's zoom in quite a bit. And these are the highlights that you want to brighten. Okay. So you can use this hand tool. Now this is one of the best tools inside of curves. So you can use these hand tools and click and drag this up to make this area bright. If you want to darken the darks, click and drag it down. As easy as a pie. Now, if you want to go more in depth and understand what that is, let us understand what that is. Click on this button to just make it normal. Now, inside of the curves on the X axis or the horizontal axis, we have the brightness levels. So on the left, we have the darks. On the right, we have the brights. As we move from left to right, we gradually move from dark to bright. As you can see in this small little bar, it's very nicely indicated. In other words, we can also say that the X axis or the horizontal axis is the input. Okay. Now let's talk about the Y axis or the vertical axis. The vertical axis is the result axis or in other words, the output axis. So this axis is also called the input axis. The horizontal axis is the input and the vertical one is the output. The horizontal axis is the target. The vertical one is the result. So for example, you want to make the brights brighter. So where are the brights? On the right hand side of the horizontal axis on this area. So we'll pick it up. We want to make it brighter, right? So this is the result, the vertical slider, or in other words, it's the output. So to make it bright as indicated in this bar, we will take it up. To make it dark, we will take it down. So our first job is to target using this horizontal axis or the input axis. Now once we target, for example, we are targeting the brights or the darks. Let's target the brights. We have to think about the result or in other words, the output. You want to make it brighter or do we want to make it darker? To make it brighter, take it up. To make it darker, take it down as easy as that. Now you can also use the hand tool. If you use the hand tool, it will exactly say where that highlight or dark area falls into place inside of that curve. So it's easier to do because you can, you don't have to guess it. You can use the hand tool to have an exact area selected. So make it a little brighter and make this area a little darker. And that's how you increase the contrast. Have a look at the before and after, before, after, but it is not just that. If you have a closer look, 
Have a look at the color of the face. It's getting too much saturated, very saturated. And we need to decrease that saturation because as you see, we increase the contrast. As we increase the contrast, the colors are affected and it's looking ugly. It's not looking nice. But if that looks good for you for that image, please go for it. It depends upon image to image. But in this image, the face is too saturated. Now, how do we tell Photoshop just affect the brightness? Do not touch the colors. Do not do anything to the colors. Just affect the brightness, which in other words is also called luminosity. We will just affect the luminosity, brightness or the darkness. We will not touch the colors. How to do that? As the name suggests, change the blend mode simply from normal to luminosity. Kaboom! It just does not affect the colors. Have a look. If it was normal, see, it was making the face a little red. It was not looking nice. If you change that to luminosity, it's not affecting the colors. Now for a little contrast, this might be fine. For a quick contrast, this is great. However, and I must say this, sometimes it can get your image a little discolored. How to tackle with that? Let's jump to example number two. So here we are in the second example and the first thing that you need to do, click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves. Now, as you can see, the brights are bright enough. We don't need to brighten it anymore. So we just need to darken the darks. Select the hand and move it over here. Who would have guessed the darks are over here, right? We would have guessed the darks are here. We would have darkened it this way, but have a look at this. And that's why this hand tool is so much more important. So these are the darks. It falls into place right over here because the skin color is light, right? So just drag it in like that. And we want to make this area a little brighter and that's fine. But as you can see, it's getting the face very magenta-ish and adding a lot of red to it and we don't like it. So how do we get rid of it? If we change the blend mode to luminosity, it's discoloring the face and giving it a very Game of Thrones kind of effect. It's very discolored, cold effect. We don't want that to happen. We want it to be vibrant at the same time. We want to increase the contrast and not get the colors too saturated. So change the blend mode, blend mode back to normal and then add a hue saturation adjustment layer above it. Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. Now we think the red is too much. So we will choose red from this drop down list, choose red and simply decrease the saturation. Let's move it to minus 22. That looks fine for this. And voila, that's done. Have a look at the before and after, before, after, before. Whoops, I did something wrong. So before, after. We increased the contrast without affecting the colors. But this is so much contrast again. Make a group of both of these. Control or Command G, select both of them, Control or Command G, and then decrease the opacity. This contrast is fine. Have a look before, after, before, after. Makes a difference. Now let's jump to example number three, where we get more advanced into color correction. Because in this case, all over the face and the body, the red was so much. Not any other colors, but what if on applying that contrast, apart from red, or just one color, a lot of colors are taking place and we need to remove a lot of colors like reds and the yellows and so many more colors. So how to tackle then? Let's jump to example number three. So here we are in example number three and as you can see, the face is very flat. It's a backlit portrait and the face has gone a little flat and we need to add a little contrast to just the face. We will learn one more thing in this section. So all you have to do, as we did before, Click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves and simply select the hand, take it all up and darks take it down. This adds a pretty nice contrast to the face, but we want to adjust to the face. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. This inverts the mask. Now take the brush, make sure the foreground color is white because white shows and black hides. Right now the mask is completely black, which means you cannot see the layer or the adjustment layer or any kind of effect inside of the image. So we need to paint white in the areas where we want to see it. So let's paint white over her face. Just like that. And that looks pretty good. Again, you don't have to be super accurate here, but see the hairs are shining so much. So take it away from the hair and that's fine. 
Now, it's affecting the color so very much. It's adding magenta, it's adding yellow, and it's not looking nice. So, how do we take care of that? Add a hue saturation adjustment layer, okay? And clip it just to this. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, if you change the saturation, it affects the whole image. If you change the hue, it affects the whole image. If you clip it to the curves, it will just affect that particular area inside of the mask. So, click on this button it will clip it. Now, if you decrease the saturation, it only affects this particular area. Let's get it back to normal. Now, all you have to do, make a selection of that particular red or magenta color and then yellow color and do that separately. So, inside of hue saturation, there's another hand tool. So, click on the hand tool, click here once. Now, we need to narrow it down, okay? So, take the hue all the way to the right, increase the saturation just for indication purposes make this narrow, okay? The slider that you see, the top shows the color spectrum of the complete image. The bottom one is the result. So for example, we are affecting this whole area. Have a look at this. If I change the hue, on the bottom is changing. See, on the bottom. Doesn't happen anything on the top because top is the target, the bottom one is the result, okay? So we are targeting that area from red to a little bit yellow of the color spectrum. Okay? You get the idea. Now we need to make it narrower and just affect this particular area, this color area. So take the hue all the way to the right and the saturation to see which area is it affecting. See, we want to affect this particular area. Now we will expand it a little bit like that. And using the outside slider, make the selection or the target smooth. Similarly, do it with this. We don't want to affect the lips, so stay away from the lips. Okay, that's pretty good. Bring it back to normal, zero. This one too, zero. Now let's decrease the saturation. Let's move it a little up and decrease the saturation. It must be fine. Wow, just decreases the saturation of that particular area. You can also change the hue, make it a little bit more yellowish or stuff. I'll go with plus three, that's fine. Have a look at the before and after before. The red thing, after, it's gone. But there's one more thing which is disturbing the yellow thing. So we will add one more hue saturation adjustment layer, or you can do it in the same one. So click on the yellows and then make it narrower. Take the hue all the way to the right and then just target this particular area. Make it a little more wide, the selection. It's pretty good. And bring it back to normal and then decrease the saturation. Let's move and let's see what kind of an effect it has. Wonderful, it looks wonderful. You can also change it a little bit magenta-ish. And that's fine, have a look at this. So before, after, before, after. Now that's some advanced hue saturation color correction. Let's have a look at the complete before and after. So this is the after and this is the before. Flat, after, before, after. If you want, make a group of both of these and decrease the opacity. This one is fine. And you can change the contrast at any point. You come back to the curves and you want to lighten it a little bit, darken this a little bit. Again, you might have to decrease the saturation inside of hue saturation. Let's go to the reds and decrease the saturation even more. Let's go to the yellows and decrease the saturation a little bit. So there you go. That's one of the best ways to increase contrast in Photoshop. Just to sum it up, create an adjustment layer called curves. Then using the hand tool, click and drag on the bright area up on the dark area, click and drag it down. If you need to, only if you need to. If the brights are bright enough, you don't have to touch them. If the darks are dark enough, you don't need to touch them. Just make sure that you increase what? The contrast, or in other words, the difference. As simple as that. First, create a curves adjustment layer, increase the contrast. If it's affecting the color and you don't like it, you can change the blend mode to Luminosity. Now, luminosity is a blend mode which tells Photoshop that you just affect the luminosity and do not touch the colors. Or if the luminosity is discoloring your image, you can add a hue saturation adjustment layer. Select the color that you want to reduce. For example, we did the red color in the second example. We chose red and we decreased the saturation. In the third example, we saw that yellow and red, both of the colors were a little disturbing. So we added a hue saturation adjustment layer 
specifically selected that particular shade of red by clicking on that using the hand tool again inside of you saturation and then narrowed down the slider and just decrease the saturation of that then we move to yellows and decrease the saturation of that and that's how we did it in a more advanced manner this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing i would like to take this moment to thank all these nice people for supporting this channel on patreon and helping keep pix imperfect free for everybody forever thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating